Sam Altman's plans have been revealed. Elon Musk predicts strong artificial intelligence and Robotics Innovation Awards announces its winners. But also, DARPA cooking up some mad scientist stuff. This and more, right now with Nick. Let's hit it. But first, previously, we announced the raffle with a grand prize of $50 in the form of a gift card, and we got a winner. Watch this video to the end to find out who it was, because maybe it was you. And stick around for more videos to participate in our next giveaways. All right, now, let's get it. The Embedded Vision Summit will take place on May 21st through 23rd in California. It will be three days of learning, from tutorials to deep dive day, covering the latest tech ideas, business trends, and vision technologies, all with a focus on practical and deployable computer vision and visual-slash-perceptual AI. The summit connects theories from major academic conferences such as CVPR with the sole purpose of creating real-world products. EmbeddedVisionSummit.com or follow the link in the description to find out more. While everyone is worried about super intelligent artificial intelligence, OpenAI head Sam Altman is slowly building a super-powered AI development alliance of governments and industry leaders. He has reportedly already met with officials from a number of Western countries. Another meeting in Washington with national security and intelligence officials was scheduled for last week, and Sam Altman also recently discussed funding prospects for his idea with investors from United Arab Emirates. The underlying current of all of these get-togethers was about how the private sector can help countries support expensive, large-scale artificial intelligence infrastructure, while the main goal is to secure and maintain America's leadership in AI and unrestricted access to relevant infrastructure. One of the key points on the agenda is a multi-billion dollar enterprise, or rather dozens of enterprises, to mainly produce microchips. But that's not all. In addition to integrated circuits, OpenAI Head is talking up a storm about using other resources like energy and data center capacity. Sounds like someone is on God mode. What do you guys think? While Sam is making devious plans, Elon Musk is dreaming about the future. The entrepreneur recently gave an unexpected forecast according to which superintelligence will appear by the end of 2025. In particular, during an interview with Nicholas Tangen in response to the question, where are we in the AI race? Musk stated that, quote, AI is the fastest developing technology I've ever seen, and I've seen a lot of technology. Computers built to enhance AI abilities are increasing in power tenfold every year, if not every six to nine months. I'm going to assume that AI smarter than any of the humans will emerge by about the end of next year, end quote. Let's emphasize that Elon only defined superintelligent AI as smarter than the smartest among humans. Emphasize more, intelligent, not omnipotent. This is an important caveat, perhaps it will allow the entrepreneur's prediction to come true. However, according to Elon, this will happen if the shortage of microchips for AI and too high of a power consumption do not slow down the process of technology development. And let's bring it back. That's exactly what Altman is working on. By the way, Sam's main antagonist inside his own company, Ilya Sutskever, agrees with Musk's prediction, but not with Altman's opinion that strong AI is a blessing. Sutskever sees the technology as potentially very dangerous. And he's right about that. If Sam's plan to build a coalition succeeds, AI in the hands of that coalition will definitely be dangerous to all of its adversaries or even just competitors. Going back to Elon's prediction, it's worth saying that there are already bets being placed on it. For example, Gary Marcus, founder of machine learning startup Geometric Intelligence, has bet a million bucks that Musk is wrong. And Danian Hankage, CEO of Inc.com, suggested raising the bet to 10 million. From what we know, Musk ignored both of them. 
But he had another bright prediction, or rather announcement. He promised to present the long-awaited Tesla RoboTaxi on August 8th this year. It will be an unmanned next-gen car without a steering wheel or pedals. The entrepreneur's statement itself was prompted by rumors that Tesla had abandoned the development of a cheap $25,000 car in favor of a RoboTaxi. In response, Musk stated, quote, Reuters is lying but at the same time made an announcement which suggests that the robo-taxi program has been significantly accelerated and that the robo-car planned for later this year will actually be shown to the public in the summer. Almost nothing is known about it though. In his published bio, Musk says that the car will be similar to the Cybertruck. There's even a photo of its early prototype. This is pretty big for full self-drive or FSD owners. If the new equipment will use the same or similar sensor configuration, that will be good news. In that case, updates developed for the RoboTaxi will be compatible with Tesla's existing fleet. Yay or nay? Let us know in the comments what you guys think. More from Musk, this time Starship. First, he intends to increase the launch frequency and payload capacity of the rocket. For this purpose, a giant factory will be built, on which it is planned to build six Starships by the end of this year, and next year, twice as many. Secondly, thanks to the arrival of the factory, the ship will have a second and third gen variation with increased payload capacities. Musk didn't give any more details, but stated the plan for May tests. Quote, unlike past launches during the next flight, the company plans to try to catch the first stage of Starship with the help of a virtual tower in the Gulf of Mexico. If it succeeds, the next landing will be with the help of a real one. The Starship is more complicated though. It's planned to land at least twice and only then try to land at the Starbase spaceport. By increasing the frequency of launches and the payload capacity of Starship rockets, the launch price will drop to two to three million dollars. Also, Musk said that flights to Mars will require six preliminary launches, but the first colonists will not be able to return to Earth. Would you dare to be the first among those traveling to Mars? And why? Give us a clue, man. Back to the topic of super strong artificial intelligence, British scientists have suggested that it might have been too strong of an AI that ruined all previous great civilizations. We're talking about the Fermi paradox, which states that if we're not alone in the universe, where is everyone else? One of its solutions is considered to be the great filter hypothesis. Allegedly, all the great civilizations in the universe are destroyed by some kind of global catastrophe. That's why none of them ever made it to us. It could be something like a nuclear war, a natural cataclysm, or rapid development of artificial intelligence. In support of this assumption, scientists cite such factors as the enormous usefulness of AI in various fields, which allows technology to penetrate everywhere and the unpreparedness of governments to progress in this area. The only way out is colonization of other planets. How did they get to this? By the way, Musk thinks the same way. Do you agree with such a theory? And can you please explain it in the comments to me? WTWH Media Group has summarized the results of its annual RBR50 Robotics Innovation Awards of 2024. In short, the robot of the year was obviously Digit from Agility Robotics. The robot was one of the first humanoid machines to begin commercial trials. Digit also became the star of the Promat exhibition, where it demonstrated its ability to take packages from the shelf, walk to the conveyor belt, and put the packages on it. By the way, the audience especially liked the fact that the robot, like humans, can get tired. The best app of the year, according to RBR50, was Autopicker from Brightpick. According to the developers, it's the first commercially available AMR that can pick and consolidate orders directly in warehouse aisles. Autopicker combines a mobile platform, a robotic arm, machine vision, and artificial intelligence. And as for the startup of the year, that was Electric Sheep. The company distinguished itself with its unique business model. Electric Sheep develops autonomous robots to maintain outdoor spaces. Instead of selling or even leasing the robots to landscaping companies, the startup acquires these companies itself, figures out how they work, and looks at where the robots can best be used to retain and even grow revenue. 
Electric Sheep's revenue has reportedly grown eightfold since implementing this strategy. Just last year, it acquired four landscaping businesses. An assembled team of researchers, mostly from the U.S. universities, is training a robopod for rescue missions on the moon. The project is funded by NASA, and now the tests of the four-legged robot Spirit are taking place on the Palma Glacier in Oregon. Earlier, the robot was tested on unstable ground, snow, and rocks. Collected data on the movements of Spirit will be used to train robots designed to work on the moon, other planets, including outside the solar system. The proposed group, by the way, will include, in addition to robotic dogs, a wheeled rover and a six-legged robot spider. Spirit itself will not be part of the group. There will be a more rugged and reliable four-legged bot. This same thin-legged machine is used solely as part of research that aims to teach robots to sense the surface in order to adapt their gait and motor skills in general. Engineers at Navier Labs have unveiled a new version of their Ambidex robot. According to the developers, it's a revolutionary robot that is fast, lightweight, and can handle like a human. The robot has a head with touch sensors and a torso and a waist for turning the body. The robot does differ from past versions in the design of the shoulder joints, but how revolutionary it is compared to the developments of other companies is still difficult to judge because of lack of information. The lab has been developing the robot for several years now and is striving to make its movements as similar to human movements as possible. As our regular viewers know, Sanctuary AI is doing the same thing, but its progress so far looks more convincing. WVU's Interactive Robotics Lab has unveiled a prototype of a six-armed stick bug pollinator that can autonomously move and pollinate flowers in a greenhouse. The robot can navigate the narrow aisles of a greenhouse and precisely pollinate flowers acting simultaneously with all of its arms to speed up the work. It can change its height to adapt to the view and position of the plants and can perform more than one and a half pollinations per minute with a 50% success rate. Stigbug has a detection model and a classifier for identifying flowers as well as a felt-tipped end effector for contact pollination. The development stems from the fact that many scientists fear a decline in the population of natural pollinators, so robots will not only work instead of us, but also instead of the bees. Is it really that much easier to build a pollinator robot than it is to figure out where all the bees are going? Northrop Grumman has unveiled its first completed prototype of the Manta Ray unmanned underwater vehicle it's developing for DARPA. The ultra-large underwater glider is designed to perform long-range underwater missions without human assistance. The drone is classified information, no surprise there. The Manta Ray is meant to be long-range and large enough to carry payloads with an emphasis on endurance rather than speed. According to Northrop Grumman, the Manta Ray prototype will be used Used to develop advanced underwater autonomous technologies. The drone should be able to lock onto the ocean bed and enter hibernation mode as well as have a modular design that allows it to be packaged in five standard shipping containers for worldwide development and on-site assembly. By the way, would you be interested in a release on DARPA's latest tech? Vote with your likes and we'll put our writers to work. The UK has unveiled a decoy launcher that clones entire Navy stealth ships on enemy radar. The Ancilia launcher created by Systems Engineering and Assessment LTD is designed to deal with multiple threats, not just radar, but infrared honing systems and everything up to hypersonic missiles. Interestingly, it's based on a rather old idea. Back in World War II, Britain came up with the idea of covering bombers from enemy radars by dropping a cloud of shredded aluminum foil in the air. The the technology was not used because it was easy to copy and the British were afraid that the Germans would repeat it. Later, it turned out that Germany also had very similar ideas which were never realized for the same reason. The new facility has six launch tubes that launch containers loaded with, among other things, a modern version of 
foil shavings that can mimic the hidden signature of a target ship, flares to attract infrared missiles, and tiny angle reflectors that can send a powerful reflection of an incoming radar beam back to its source to blind it. It's also equipped with advanced electronics and software to easily integrate with command and control systems and third-party electronic support tools. The rest of the system's details are so far classified, but we'll keep you updated, so stay tuned. Engineers have long been trying to adapt drones to inspect power lines. In theory, this job is perfect for them, but in practice, there's one big problem – insufficient battery capacity. To solve this, developers from the University of Southern Denmark came up with the idea of recharging the drone directly from the lines it inspects. To do this, they added a passive power line gripper to the top of the industrial drone. When the drone's onboard software detects that its battery is running low, the drone uses its camera and radar to locate the nearest power line, flies up to it, and just grabs the wire. An inductive charger on top of the drone begins to draw current from the power line. Once the drone's battery is fully charged, the gripper opens and the drone can resume its line checking duties. By the way, the charging technology developed by scientists can be used to perform a variety of tasks with drones. Engineers at the University of Tokyo have unveiled a new experimental drone. Delta can fly to a target area and then turn into a motorized wheel and roll on the ground to save energy. The ring-shaped body of the device consists of three curved connected segments. Each has its own motor module mounted on a rod spanning the width of the segment. At the same time, the module can rotate around the rod. When the drone is flying, its body is oriented parallel to the ground with all three thrust vector propellers facing upwards. If necessary, it can detach one or more links between its segments to get out of the circular shape during flight. As with other multi-link drones, we've seen this shape-shifting ability could allow Delta to fly through narrow passageways, for example. When it makes sense to switch to a ground-based model of travel, however, the drone lands on one side and then rotates its propellers so that the combined thrust pushes the drone up and lands perpendicular to the ground. The angles of the propellers are then adjusted by onboard microprocessor, allowing them to roll the drone forward, prevent it from falling, and even turn left or right. Is this the most unusual drone you've ever seen, or what? There's more, but we're out of time, so this is the part where we announce the winner of our previous giveaway. As always, to participate, you had to A, subscribe to our channel, and follow us on Instagram, and B, answer the following question in the comments. Question, what year did Mark Reibert, the founder of Boston Dynamics, obtain his PhD? And the answer is, 1977, he got it from MIT. So if we turn on our random comment picker right now and see who gets the $50 gift card, and the winner is Ragnarocket. Congratulations, Ragnarocket, one more time. Thank you so much for participating, and thank you for participating, everybody who did. Otherwise, which news story struck you the most out of all of these ones today? Share your thoughts in the comments, subscribe to our channel, and join our community on Telegram to be the first to know all the latest tech news. Until next time, bye-bye.